Please welcome the chairman and CEO of Dryer's Grand Ice Cream and former Bay Area Council Chairman, Gary Rogers. Good evening. Not much happens in San Francisco that doesn't have the fingerprints of Warren Hellman on it. If the Chronicle is being sold, Warren's in the middle of it. If the Bank of America building is being sold or not, Warren is in the middle of it. If UCS and Stanford are merging their hospitals, or unmerging them as the case may be, Warren is in the middle of it. If the DeYoung Museum is being moved or not, Warren is in the middle of it. The list goes on and on. But if you really want to know what's going on in this town, put a tail on Warren Hillman. But that's only part of the story. Warren is one of the most extraordinary and fascinating characters ever to come down the pike in this town. For years and years and years, Warren has gotten up at about 4 o'clock in the morning to go for a long run. He used to do it every day. These days, he runs about 10 miles every morning through the Presidio, and Warren is 69 years old. Once Warren tripped at the 25-mile mark of a 100-mile ultramarathon he was running and broke a rib. He got up and completed the remaining 75 miles. He claims he has a strong ability to endure pain. <laughs> Born in New York City in 1934, a graduate of UC Berkeley and of Harvard, he's known as a man of bold strokes, but with a down-to-earth mentality and humble words. He's also never without a great joke. <laughs> you know Warren. Warren received an MBA from Harvard University in 1959 at the age of 25. That same year, he took a job at Lehman Brothers, and in three years, Warren became the youngest person ever to be named a partner of that firm. Eleven years later, he was named president of Lehman Brothers. In 1984, Tully Friedman and Warren formed Hellman and Friedman, a firm that has raised and managed over $4.8 billion of committed capital in its 18-year history. Hellman and Friedman deserve particular respect as one of the rare equity firms to recognize that the market was peaking in 1999 and 2000 and sold most of their portfolio when prices were high. Just before the collapse at a board meeting, someone remarked on the growing stock market windfall. Warren quietly scribbled a note, trees don't grow to the sky. Warren's perspicacity also applies in his phil philanthropic work, which is really why he's here tonight. Warren and his wife of 47 years, Chris, are involved in countless philanthropic endeavors, most of which are anonymous. One finds out about much of their philanthropy only through whispered anecdotes. Some, though, have been thoroughly found out. They fund the San Francisco Free Clinic, which provides free health care to 4,000 needy indigents per year. Their daughter, Trish, runs that clinic. Warren funds the San Francisco Bluegrass, an old-time festival that is held each year in Golden Gate Park, for free. One year when the weather at the festival was particularly hot, Warren bought out all the water vendors at the festival just to keep everything free. When Warren was told that the museums in Golden Gate Park were suffering due to poor attendance, he immediately led the work to build an underground garage to increase access. He then put together a capital campaign to raise $40 million for those museums. Warren and Chris also run the Hellman Fellows Program. This program provides funding to a number of professors who, for one re reason or another, would not be able to complete their required research and attain tenure. Warren is very involved with the San Francisco Foundation, providing significant financial support and recently serving as the organization's chairman. During his tenure, he helped develop a very sophisticated investment committee, and as a result, the foundation's assets have done very well in hard times. And as Richard was saying, the San Francisco Foundation, under Warren's leadership, has been able to maintain stable uh, giving during these tough times. So although the economy has soured over the past few years, the foundation has maintained its level of giving when dependent organizations need it most. And finally, Warren Hellman is a man who is very generous with his time. To say that anyone can get a meeting with Warren is a compliment and a truism. He meets with the infamous Bicycle Coalition, protesting students at Mills College, <laughs> or the governor of California, with equanimity. Warren, we thank you for being such an inspiration to us all and for your wide range of contributions to our community. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of your Hall of Fame, Warren Hellman.
Wow, well, I, I really am stunned to be standing here. I know Ms. Balancy for my homeroom teacher at Lowell would be absolutely amazed. <laughs> the day that she asked my mother if it would be po <clears throat> possible to transfer me to mission. Uh, <laughs> so eat your heart out, Ms. Balancy for. <laughs> when I was, uh, I keep thinking, what am I doing here? And I keep hoping, you know, the old story about the stork and the cranes, that the stork will be judged like the cranes. I hope I'll be judged like the fellow honorees tonight, because I'm pretty sure I don't deserve it. When Gary said, uh, said to me, would you uh, be willing to, be, to become a member of the Bay Area Business Hall of Fame, he said, would you accept? And I said, did you see Ghostbusters? And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, there was a scene in Ghostbusters where Sigourney Weaver is lying on a couch with very little clothing. And she says to Bill Murray, do you want this body? And Bill Murray says, is that a trick question? <laughs> People have asked, why do you give? What, what motivates you to give? And it's really a very surprising question because the question really should be, why don't people give? All of us have been given, all of us in this community have been given a gift beyond belief by our predecessors or even uh, by ourselves if we moved here. All of us have, st each of us has a story about a, about a father, mother, grandmother, great-grandfather, who lived under, in very difficult uh, and oppressed, difficult oppressed or otherwise unpleasant circumstances in, in another country. They all came here. In our, in our case, they came to California. In our case, they came to San Francisco. And we were given this unbelievable gift of, of being able to be brought up to live here. And, my, my question is, how could you not give back? We've been given the most amazing gift imaginable. So it isn't a question of why do you give, it's a question of why, do you not, why would one not give. Finally, and I'm for me going to make this short, uh, it, I'm particularly proud I have a wife, a granddaughter, who were, and I think a daughter, I mean, I think she's my daughter. I mean, I know she's my daughter. <laughs> Who are all here. So, uh, Chris, Tricia, Laurel, could you stand up for just a sec? Thank you. Particularly, Dr. Tricia Gibbs, my daughter, and her husband were the founders of the San Francisco Free Clinic. And I would put in an advertisement, make an advertisement for the clinic lunches. Yeah, but I won't do that. That's a different affair. You can learn a great deal, and I think all of us do in different ways, from reading the scriptures. This morning, I happened to be reading Ecclesiastes, and I read the following lines, which I think both define why I'm here and what inspires me. And in Ecclesiastes 9.9, it says, Enjoy happiness with a woman you love all the fleeting days. Whatever is in your power to do, do with all your might. Thank you. Thank you.